All right, let's see. All right, looks like we're going live. Now, Alicia, we're promoting you to panelists. Well, Alicia's getting ready. Just want to introduce myself. I am Dr. Nadia. I have a sales agency where we work with women entrepreneurs. Mostly, I do work with men, so men don't feel left out. Um, but you're not going to take care of my girls. I'm um, helping women entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, I should say, build their businesses, be more effective in sales. And today is Asked and Answered with Dr. Nadia, where I am taking your questions. And I have three amazing entrepreneurs who are going to be in what we're calling our love seats, right? And so our first one is the amazing Alicia Houston, all the way from San Diego, California. Hi, Alicia. I cannot hear you. Do I need to unmute you? Okay, got it. Got, got it. it. Got You're it. ready. Okay, Hi. wonderful. So, Hello. Thank you for joining. Um, again, before you dive in, because I know people are coming in, if you have, you're not one of my love seat people for today and you have a question, please, please, please use the Q&A box so that I can see it. If you're on Facebook, uh, join us <laughs> and we'll get to Facebook <laughs> later. <laughs> it's like, got a lot of pieces moving right now, but okay, great. So Alicia, give us a little bit um, about your business first and then okay. let's go ahead and... Uh, ask your question. Okay, wonderful. Please let me know if you can hear me because as you know, we are entrepreneurs, so we do business in coffee shops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Boss moves. I know you'll like uh, that some of these stuff. <laughs> yes, baby, yes. So as Nadia said, uh, or as Dr. Nadia says, see, I can call her Nadia or Dr. Nadia, but you may not have that privilege. So don't get it twisted. <laughs> Rub it but. in, why don't you? <laughs> But as Dr. Nadia said, my name is Alicia Houston, and I'm in beautiful San Diego. I mean, I know you can see the weather behind me. Come on now. You know, gorgeous, gorgeous San Diego on this Thursday. And I specialize in leadership development as well as personal development for the busy, high caliber woman or man in entrepreneurship or in their career. And I, I am what I call your leadership accelerator. So that is Alicia Houston. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, is there anything else that I need to say, Dr. Nadia, before I go into my question? Nope, that was it. Just want everyone to know who they were get, hearing from today. So go ahead, dive right in. The floor okay. is Okay, so previously, just to give you a little reference, I created a business and it was a um, brick and mortar. And so I created a business, it was brick and mortar. It was a little bit of a different, um, for lack of a better term, I'll say sales experience. And now as I have kind of, so I sold that business and shifted into um, a little bit more of the entrepreneur status and I'm building my my Rolodex, I'll say as well. Um, I have some dynamic people that I'm being connected to, that I'm reconnecting with, and it can be. I'm finding it difficult to um, begin that conversation without starting sounding salesy. Like I want to reach out to them, I want to connect to them. I know I have resources of value that will be relevant to what they're going through, what they're building within their own companies, and it's a little difficult. Like I feel. Um, gross <laughs> a little bit and so it's hindering me from yeah. really making those 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 touching those people that I know need my services and so just how how can I do that like because I know like companies need speakers I know companies need executive coaches I know companies need training workshops and those are things that I offer but I don't want to like just go all in like hey hire me so I need some some framework about how to kind of come in very gently, very softly, really um, building, rebuilding maybe even some of those connections or, or bringing them back into conversations that we had even when I was at my other business. Right. So it's kind, of, it's kind of layered. So I would love, love, love any insight, any wisdom that you can give me. <laughs> yeah, so just to kind of reframe, um, you know, uh, you know, so you're in transition, you're moving from your brick and mortar, you're doing something new. So you moved on and you have these relationships that you've developed and you want to let them know what you're doing now. Some of them will be ideal clients and then some yeah. of them might know your ideal clients. 
And so the question is, how do I dive in and not like ask them to marry me on my first date? You know, like when you're getting acquainted, right? So um, how many of you that are listening have that same issue? You're like, I know I need to connect with people and let them know what I'm doing, but I don't want to be a sleazebag about it because we've gotten those calls. I haven't heard from you in seven years and you only call me because you have the new thing that you're doing, whatever that is, right? And you, I don't know if you can see the chat box, but trust me, Alicia, there's me. Yes, yes, yes. Like, girl, you, they feel you, right? So what does that look like? I love this question because a lot of times the fear of being icky because we've been on the receiving end holds us back. It holds us back from reaching out. It holds us back from being able to connect with people. And so my initial response to that, Alicia, is just to reach out and connect. Don't go in with any expectations. So it's more of a, hey, I know, and even acknowledge it. So if you haven't spoken to someone in years, don't, don't pretend like we just spoke yesterday. Say, hey, I know it's been a while since we've spoken, but love to reconnect and just get to know, you know, see what it is that you're up to these days. I've sensed if they know you from your previous life, you know, I've since left that and I'm doing something new and we'd love to share that with you. So it's not this deep, like, oh my gosh, you know, some people love to hear from you. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, it's Alicia, I can't wait to talk to her. And then of course, with the, the power of technology, you can include a link, you know, set up a call with me, let's get together, virtual coffee or whatever. Or if they're in the city, you actually want to meet them face to face, you can do that too. But the key is the reconnection. And you mentioned that, I don't even know if you realized that you said it, but is the key is the reconnection. Focus on reconnecting with people. Don't just go in, buy my stuff with your, with your uh, pad folio and your order forms. Like that's not how any of this works. And that way it doesn't feel gross because people get it. I know we're busy. I've been busy. I've obviously been in transition. They've been busy and they will respect you for reaching out. And most people will be like, oh my gosh, I've been meaning to reach out to you too. Thank you for taking the initiative. But it's all about your perspective and your goal at this juncture is just to reconnect. Once you reconnect and then they know what it is that you do, then you can be more strategic about connecting more frequently. And you can even ask their permission. Is it okay if, you know, depending on who it is, is it okay if I add you to my mailing list? Is it okay if then we do have a deeper dive conversation where you're moving it from the reconnection phase so, you know, let's talk maybe a little bit more business because I know a little bit about what you do. So then some people will be ideal just to be executive coaching clients, just one-on-one. -on -one. Perfect. We can move it to that. And there may be people where you may go in and work with their company. So, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of conversations anyway, but then you can say, you know, I would love to learn more about your company. I would love to share more about how, just some of the challenges that they've shared naturally in the course of your conversation, how my company might be able to support you in that. Can we schedule another call where the focus of that conversation is solely on moving that forward? Does that make sense? 100%. And I was actually going through scenarios in my head because I do, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is really, helpful because I've created this list of people that I want to follow up with and it's just sitting there looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, use me, hello. Yes, yes. So this is, ex this is so timely. This, oh my God, like I'm excited now. <laughs> yes, see, there you go. Because now it's not gross. It's not like I'm going in and trying to beat people up that I haven't spoken to in forever. It's, I'm just reconnecting. I'm letting you know yes. what I'm doing. And then yes. you start to put people in buckets. And then you can also just, mm as well alicia how you work with people you know like i would love to get a referral now that you know what i do if you know oh. anyone that can leverage my services would love if you will refer them to me and i can send over some more information to you to make it easy so there's so many ways that you can do that without it feeling disgusting oh that's so good oh my goodness because there are people that we know that of course they're in this realm and so they're going to know other people because they have business besties and people that they're connected with and so that is great because i me neither lavista i never ask for referrals so that think and that's really simple to do it's mm -hmm. not this hey can you refer me and right. then like what you just said giving them the language so they don't have to do the work so it's really simple and the right things are said oh my gosh yes yeah, 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 yes <laughs> thank you you're 
You're welcome. Thank you. Any follow-ups to that? Are you good? I am fantastic. Let me think for a second. Hold on. I'm not going to rush. Hold on. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good because I actually do have lunch with one woman that I took the, took the leap and reached out and Very she good. connected and we're going to have lunch. So I love because you're, you're helping me to frame that conversation. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was gold. Thank Yay! you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. So, all right. So I'm going to put you back as a participant. Thank our you. Love seat yeah. person. <laughs> Miss Jackie Wheeler. So, Jackie, I hope you're ready. I'm coming for you, lady. Jackie. All right. This is really good stuff. So, while Jackie's uh, coming, I just cheered. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> Hi, Judith. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, ja we can't hear you, Jackie. How's that? Yes. Perfect. Does that work? Okay. Sorry, it took me a minute to buffer in, I guess. So, hello, Dr. Nadia. Hi. Thank you for joining me. So, before we dive into your question, because you know I'm all excited. I've been excited this morning. Like, ah! <laughs> um, first, tell people a little bit about you and your business, and then we'll go into your question. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. So, uh, I'm Jackie Wheeler. I'm owner and stylist of Jackie Style Image Consulting and Personal Image Branding, and I do kind of a multiple layering of all of that. Um, the first piece is a styling opportunity. Uh, I do wardrobe being packing, making sure people look great in person. I have a skincare line that kind of fits in that as well. And then um, the other piece is I do social media. So I help you look great online as well as in person. So I, that's the whole piece of my business. Um, within each of those areas, um, I, <laughs> I have very specific things that I'm doing. And, um, oh, and I'm a mom, so I'm very busy. I'm a wife. I'm a, um, you know, a household manager, all those things, you know, all the things that we women are. How and, many of those of you who are listening in can relate to Jackie's life right now? Household manager, CEO, mom, chauffeur, cook, <laughs> wifey, <laughs> all of that. and more, right? And, right? and more. It's like, I got all these hats going down, right? <laughs> And so um, I have like this amazing business I love so much and uh, I am continuing to grow it and I've taken your advice on the connecting. Um, I'm, my question is, if you're ready for me, are you ready for me? I'm ready. Okay. So my question is I have these very specific um, opportunities for clients and I have gone through my list and have invited but what happens when I'm done going through that list or how do I know if I've missed anybody or, you know, I, I need to build onto those things and continue to build, but where do I go from here? Like, I feel like I've asked all the right people. I've done all the right things, but now I'm like, uh, where are they at now? So that's where I'm at. That's the big question of the day. Although I could sit here forever and talk to you about stuff, but, but that's my <laughs> one. You can talk to me beyond today, but we'll talk about it. Great. So let me ask you this, Jackie, when you say you've gone through your list, what does that look like? Is that I've sent out emails to my list or I have a list of people I've actively like called and spoke with? It's a little bit of both. So okay. um, I've, I've identified people. So I made that step of identifying. I feel like Alicia and I are in a good place. We've made it, you know, we've identified them um, who I felt would be, uh, connected the best with this particular programs. Um, and I have sent, I've done multiple things. So some emails, some of it's just that there's been um, per, lots, several, lots of personal connection, probably not all of them have been personally connected to, but, um, so it's known like it's on Facebook. I talk about it. I Instagram it. I talk about it at all my networking meetings. I'm concerned people are not getting tired of hearing about me with it, but it's like, I, this is my, um, the thing that I'm promoting for this year. So I am going to continue to talk about it because I want it to be strong and healthy from now on forward. So, so let me, so are we talking about passport style, passport style? Yeah. Let's talk about passport because the other one is so big. <laughs> talk about both a little bit. Let's start with passport. Um, so before, for those of you that don't, for those that don't know you, Jackie. Yes, ma'am. Tell us a little bit about what 
the heck Passport is. Okay, so I have a program, it's called Passport of Style, and it is a monthly shopping opportunity for my clients to shop with me in a group experience. Um, I pick pre-pick the location, we do styling, they do shopping, we have tons and tons of fun, and they get to leave with that specific item. There is a specific item each month, so it's a 12, it's a 12 month program, potentially. So they have the option to do a pop in, they can do a three month, I'm thinking a six month and a 12 month. So depending upon what their needs are. The goal is if they choose a 12 month, by the end of that 12 months, they actually have a full core wardrobe for them to work with, a basis to work with. So it's, um, so yeah, that's, that's, it's a monthly program. So it's ongoing. It's not like Jackie's doing it this year and that's it. It's, it's for now on until, until I decide I don't want to do it anymore, basically. Right. And it's hot. I have so much fun when I go and I'm, I'm the one that the one she has to herd because I'm always buying stuff that's not, that we're not, we have focused on one item. I'm like, but what about all these other cool things that I need to get? But I digress. <laughs> Poor Jackie. She's like, we're here to get white shirts, naughty and not boots. Oh, my bad. My bad. Um, you are not so, the only one. FYI. Right. <laughs> every time. <laughs> So the thing is, you know, you're, this is your baby yeah. and this is your idea. And it feels like sometimes that you're talking about it over and over and over and over and over again. And you're tired of talking about it, but you're not seeing the traction. Am I right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many of us feel that way? Like I talk about this all the stinking time and I'm sick of hearing about it. But the thing is, people aren't thinking about your stuff as much as you are. So while you're tired of talking about it, that doesn't mean they're tired of hearing about it. Um, people are busy. Is there a woman on this broadcast right now that isn't busy? <laughs> Bueller, Bueller, right. Like, that no one's raising their hands. It's like, no, I'm so busy. I, I have stuff going on. So the thing is, somebody just, I'll call it something else. The thing is that you want to, to look at is where are those different touch points? Again, being strategic about how often you re reach out to people and the multiple ways. Um, and again, you know, because this is so different, I don't necessarily know of any other stylist that has Passport. Part of it is the educational piece. Like people, once they get it, they get it, but not everyone. Some people are like, what exactly is that? So there are a couple different ways that you can do it. One, ask for referrals. What are those people? Again, referrals, referrals. Those people that are already part of your world that may know someone, do you have incentives for them to bring a friend? You know, like I know, you know, so when you have your core group of ladies and they can bring a friend if they're coming, you know, for a pop-in or even, you know, incentivizing those that maybe have signed up to work with you for that entire year. So there are a couple of different strategies. But the other piece to this, because part of this is not just sales, Part of this is also lead generation. So looking at who is ideal for this and then how do you get in front of her? What does that process look like? Um, is it more speaking? Are you at the right networking events where that ideal person would be? Um, you know, looking at those pieces, are you communicating enough with your list? You know, are you doing enough lives? Are you taking your Facebook lives and then taking those videos and emailing them to your list? Are you, do you have a call to action for people that see you on Facebook where they can connect with you and be part of your community? Like really looking at all those different pieces and because they all work together. So I think part of it right now, a big piece is still education because you haven't done this yet for a full year. And then also, are you talking to the right people? Because again, you guys who probably, who've ever heard me teach or train about sales, I always talk about there's the Walmart, and there's the Nordstrom. And both are really great companies, but their strategies are very different. And if you're building a Nordstrom brand, but you're hanging out in a Walmart parking lot, you're going to be frustrated. Because hmm. those people are not looking for the Nordstrom experience. They're looking for stuff that's quick and cheap and whatever. And that's not bad. That's just not who you want to work with. Right. So I would encourage you to also just kind of evaluate your efforts you know, are there something, and also do an analysis, because you've been doing this now for what, about six months? Six months, yeah. Yeah, it's, now you have enough data to kind of see, like, where are the people who are part of Passport, where did they come from? What are some gaps, you know, what are things that are working well that you can do more of, and what are some things that have been kind of falling flat? Don't keep doing those things, just let it go, because then you have more energy and resources, even financial resources, and then pour into the things that are working. 
But I think a big piece is making sure that you're in front of, you know, your ideal clients and, you know, not hanging out in the wrong spot. I wouldn't know anything about doing that, you know. <laughs> I've flown across the country to talk to inappropriate audiences, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> but yeah, so take a look at that. Take some time, you know, this month to just um, to do an analysis and even checking in with maybe your team. You know, what are the things that have worked really well around this one product? And what are some things that, you know, just kind of falling flat? Um, and then I want you to share really quickly about this other thing that you have brewing because it's really hot. I thought about you yesterday. I was at a store and it had this cute little book about Eddie all over it. And I was like, oh, Jackie would love this. But um, tell us a little bit about that because, you know, it's, it, it can be tough. So go ahead. Okay. So um, I am creating an amazing fashion retreat style retreat i'm not even sure what the particular name should be but it's called passport of style paris and it is a i know a parisian trip that is um set for may of 2019 it is a high-end luxury custom opportunity for clients to work with me in paris um we'll be doing all the sightseeing stuff but We'll also be doing the shopping, so the styling, and I'm going to be there to help them make sure that everything that they purchase and the things that they're looking at really goes with who they are as an individual as well as their branding. So by the time they leave, they're going to have this amazing trip, amazing opportunity for retreat as well as be in Paris, and um, that uh, that week long process of being with me and um, and and just being styled and loved on and pampered that entire time that we're together. So that is my other one. So it's kind of a similar kind of a question like, okay, this is a very, and it's very limited. It's, it's the, there's a few available spots available. So, um, so it's intimate. So it's not like 900 of us going to Paris. Yeah. It's okay. very intimate. It's a small group, um, very specialized, specialized time with me, all those things. So <clears throat> that's, I think I covered everything in there, but uh, it's a pretty awesome opportunity. I'm so excited. And those invitations are going out, those personalized invitations. This is not necessarily, I'm, sneak, I'm sneaking bits and pieces of it on Facebook and Instagram kind of as a teasers, but it really is a by invitation only um, opportunity. And I guess it's kind of in that same line. I'm, I have this list that I know that will appreciate it, love it, want to pop pots, would be a part of it. But if I'm not getting the, that low, that minimum number, which who wants minimums, right? But that minimum number to make it happen, where am I going? And it's, but it's a very similar answer. I, I think it's a very similar answer. Well, I think part of it, I love, cause you mentioned just by invitation only. Mm -hmm. So I think part of it, you know, sometimes when we are in business, we just get caught up in the whole, you know, I gotta be out here. I gotta be out here. I gotta be out here. And it's important to be visible. But I think sometimes we underappreciate the people who already know us and love us and appreciate us. So I think there's a still a lot of gold in your current community, your former clients or your current clients, where you can really work that out. So um, definitely by invitation only. Um, I think referrals will also be great, but you would definitely want to vet them because you're going to spend a week with yeah. them in Paris, right? Yeah, right. Um, and even though it's going to be an intimate group, you, we all know that one person with the wrong attitude can ruin the whole trip. So definitely really communicating those pieces. Um, and be okay with it not feeling like you're having this massive rush. I'm going to do one Facebook Live and my website's going to crash. Like that's not what you're building. No. And to be okay with the exclusivity of it. I think, again, just making sure that you're inviting the right people. Um, not casting your pearls before swine, if you will. You know, there's just people that just won't get it, and that's okay. You have other ways that you can serve them, but really getting clear on who's the right person to be in that room. Where is she? Do you already know her? Do you already know someone who knows her? And how can you really leverage those relationships to invite her to be a part of this amazing experience? The other piece to this that I'll add is be sure to focus on what's in it for her. So making sure that in your marketing materials or when you're having those conversations and you're really framing that conversation, you know, that invitation to her, that she is clear on what she walks away with. Yes, it's Paris. So one 
Yeah, that's one feather in your cap. Like, woo, I get to go to Paris. Yeah, that's the bomb. And, but also making sure how she's going to be a different woman once she leaves Paris. You know, so you can really, so she can really see all of the benefits to her being a part of this very intimate, exclusive retreat with you in Paris next year um, versus, you know, just all the things that we get. And I know that's hard because you've been dreaming of this, you've been thinking about it and strategizing and you want to go, we're going to do this, we're going to see this, we're going to do that. But I want you to hold on that first, put a pin in it, talk about how she's going to be different, what her life will be, look like once she's um, gone. Also think about what objections she might have so that you can address those up front. And then you can talk about all the things that you guys will do while you're over there because it's amazing and she'll never be the same. And then, you know, you can extend that exclusive invitation, but you're on the right track. Keep it exclusive. It's high end. Again, Walmart Nordstrom. I don't want you passing out flyers and putting on people's cars. Like that's not what you're building here. <laughs> and then it's okay with it. It's going to be a slower process. A lot, a lot more likely it's going to be a longer lead cycle, a sales cycle, I mean. So don't be, be okay with that. Don't get um, anxious and just keep doing what it is that you're doing. You're on the right track. Yay. Thank you. Yay. Awesome. Any other questions? You good? Um, I, oh, hmm. Well, there's tons of questions that are in my head, but I think we're good for today. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Jackie, for doing your love seat with us today. All right. So I'm going to uh, move you back to attendee. And Hi. up next, we have Judith, who is our next love seat person. Hold on. All right. And Miss Judith. All right. So while Judith is coming on board, for those of you, I see some uh, comments. Oh, preach, Dr. Nadia. <laughs> Thank you. I got on my soapbox a little bit there. Um, you know, if you want to have more conversations or you're being a little shy, like Dr. Nadia, I don't know if I want to share my question with the world, head on over to meetwithdrnadia.com and we can have a one-on-one -on -one and I can answer your burning question. Hi, Judith. Hello. How are, How you? are you? I'm great. I'm good. Um, this has been fantastic. I'm hoping that you're recording this. I am recording this okay. and I'm planning to do this again because I'm having way too much fun not to. <laughs> okay, because all of those things that you've just talked about with the two other people are like, I gotta remember that. <laughs> so perfect. Then, yeah. Awesome. So, so tell us a little bit about you and your business. Um, well, I'm Judith Tamara and I uh, own Judith Tamara Design. And what I do, I'm an interior designer and I'm certified in design psychology. And my focus is I help entrepreneurs, usually women entrepreneurs, create powerful work in environments because when you feel powerful, then your work is more powerful. And when you feel like you're enjoying your work, your spirit comes through more. So it's a, it's a how to create an environment using design psychology and other techniques to make this really nourishing, amazing container for your vision and your intentions and your work and yourself so that you can really, you know, pop those whistles and bang those drums and stuff like that. So nice. that's what I, do. I love it. Well, welcome. So Judith emailed me her question. <laughs> Is there anything you wanted to say about your question or anything you wanted to, did one thing stand out more than the other? Um, I think, and it's great that I emailed the question because it's actually really hard for me to wrap my brain around it because I think that there are lots of moving parts inside of me and maybe outside of me as well. So it makes it hard for me to like focus on one thing or the other. But I think the crux of it is um, I do these fresh look sessions, which are like intro sessions to my work. And I do sales calls and the fresh look sessions have a healing environment quality because really what I do is I do healing work through the media of, of interior design. And, um, and in the sales conversations, my boundaries all get mushy. Like I just get very confused on the inside because, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know, because I'm used to going intimate into the details of a person's space, I don't know how far to go with that within a sales conversation. And part of it is that I just have this idea that a sales conversation has to be sort of kind of this uptight, um, 
environment where everyone's doing business. And so I get really confused between that like intuitive healer part of me and that business part of me and how they, how they yeah do stuff, you know? So yeah, that's yeah. it. Okay. Before we dive in, is there anyone else that can relate to Judith where it feels like I need to be stiff and stuffy to be my sales conversation person, you know? So, um, versus just being me. Um, and then how many of us struggle with the boundaries? Like when is it okay to transition into let's talk about the money keys versus me being an intuitive healer and giving some insight. Is that kind of where we're, we're at with this? Yeah, but it's actually the intimacy of the healing process in the environment. I don't know. It's a kind of like two hats. Got it. So let me ask you this question. Um, your, are your fresh look sessions, like your strategy sessions, where you're having this conversation, but part of it is to kind of get to know them so then you can go deeper with them and work with them? Is that kind of the purpose? Yes, yes. But it, it has a natural flow to it that makes it. sense. Yeah. yeah, no, that makes sense. Like that, the conversation guides, and our, that's part of it. The flow, mm -hmm. the purpose of the, if, of the conversation guide is to lead people to a natural buying decision. So it's the flow of the mm -hmm. conversation. Perfect. Okay. Um, here's the thing. One is, this is going to sound so whatever, but um, <laughs> the big piece is to ask. So when you're in that, well, there's two things I want to say. First is setting expectations. So a lot of times people may not know what to expect when going into a fresh look session with you. They think they know, but they don't really know. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, what you do is a little unique. And so, you know, so letting people know up front. So one of the things that I would love for you to see you do is at the in onset of the conversation, let them know that this is how the conversation is going to go. And using your language. Um, you know, if there are pieces of it that may be deep or, you know, give them some heads up, like this may even trigger some emotions. Yeah. I've had people cry on sales calls with me and I'll tell you the first time it happened, I almost, I was like taken aback, like, Whoa, what do I do? Like, did I just totally screw it up? Right. But, mm -hmm. you know, letting people know up front that this could be a very, uh, intimate conversation so that they don't feel like they've been bamboozled or blindsided. That's the word I want to, you know, blindsided, like, whoa, where'd that come from? I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. um, you can even set expectations prior to that, like making sure they're in an environment that, you know, like they're not on the go. Like Alicia was earlier, she was out and about, like that might not be the best setting for you to have your conversation. So you can let them know ahead of time that, you know, be in this type of environment, you may want to um, not be on your computer, um, unless you guys are meeting via Zoom, may want to sit down, have your journal, like really set those expectations so that they're in the right environment that's conducive to what it is that you have for them. That's um, I, I find that when you set those expectations, people aren't like, whoa, I'm surprised. And then they don't feel violated, even when we do it unintentionally. Okay. Um, and then from there, you can just lead them into it. And if you feel like, you know, part of that expectation setting is also as a part of this conversation, I will, you know, if it's a good fit, invite you to, like, you know, share ways that we can go deeper and I can really help you in that space, you know, and it, what it is that you do. So then again, you are clear on your boundaries and it feels good to both of you because if you're not feeling good, they're going to pick up on that energetically and they won't know why, but then that'll put up another barrier around trust around you. And it's unintentional on your part, but you want to eliminate as many barriers as you can and really get in them to say yes to what it is that they know they want. Okay. So the other question is, is when they're not signing up for a fresh look session, when they're just getting in contact with me because they're interested in my work and they're interested in working with me, how do I set the expectations that I might actually ask them very intimate questions and that this is, even though this is like a conversation that's a sales call and about money that they're, that we're going to go into this, like, how do I do that? You actually said it right. So I'm going to read your words back to you because you, I was like, <laughs> this is my like, well, this was perfect. She didn't need me for this. Um, you know, hi, you're here to talk to me because you're interested in being my client and paying me money. I, you know, whatever. <laughs> you're interested in working with me. We'll clean that up a little bit. Um, <laughs> but for me to understand where you are coming from and what the work would look like, I need to ask you some questions. And some of them may be intimate. Is that okay with you? Like, yeah. there's nothing wrong with saying that at all. Because again, it's like, whoa, 
you're asking me these questions. And if they're anything like me, if you didn't say that to me, I would be suspicious. Like, where is this line of questioning going? Like, I feel like I'm being interrogated. But yeah, oh, some of these are going to be intimate. It's like, oh, okay, cool. And if they have the option to say yes or no, and if they say no, then it's like, well, we're just obviously not a good fit to work together. <laughs> Day to call right then but then you're just again asking permission respecting them and their boundaries but also respecting yours too yeah. and as you're giving them and showing them how it is that you work with clients okay perfect yay i also so wanted to address one of your other questions when you talked about just how do you show up in a sales call and feeling like i have to be stiff and formal and whatever mm -hmm. just be you my sales call, the way you guys see me right now, that's how my sales calls go. We laugh, we have a great time, I'm cracking jokes, like, but that's just who I am. So mm -hmm. that's just how I roll. And I've, I've, I tried to show up like someone else, it doesn't feel right. It's a hot flaming mess and no one gets anywhere. But when I show up as Dr. Nadia, hey, here, you know, here's where we are and here's what we're gonna do. Um, again, you know, I do the same things in terms of setting the intention, here's how the call's gonna go, but I show up as me. I'm a goofball most of the time, you know, and I just get to be that. And if people can't handle me on a sales call being goofy, then they probably won't want to work with me. Yeah, that's you what know? I tell myself okay. too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know we're totally like, I have to be formal. I get it. You know, especially yeah. me, I'm Dr. Nadia. Surely you should, you know, whatever. So um, people have their preconceived notions. But again, just be yourself. If you're calm, more cool, more collective, more serious, then be that. You know, you don't have to crack jokes if you're like, I don't tell jokes because I always run a punchline. I just get to be me, which uh, thankfully I'm, people find me funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is you talked about giving feedback. Um, actually, one thing I wanted to address was your PS. And um, you talked about the free session and then swagging into a sales conversation and how some t a lot of times that feels clunky. Part of the reason why it feels clunky is the way many of us were taught to do sales sessions or strategy sessions, discovery sessions, whatever the heck we call them, was has that energy of bait and switch. It's like, mm -hmm. come talk to me and you can get free coaching or free strategy session. I'm gonna do this stuff for you for free. And but our whole intention though, and what we know is to move them to actually buy. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that well, it's a mess. So there are a couple options. One is Free sessions aren't for every business model. Mm -hmm. I have a few clients that actually charge for their sessions because of the type of work that they do. The way they frame it though, is that if you choose to work with me beyond this session, I'll apply that investment towards your work. So it's kind of like, you know, that's one way to frame it. The other thing is just to be straight up. This is not a free session in terms of where I'm just gonna give you all my goodies for free and you get to walk away with no commitment. This is a session where we're going to basically interview one another in order to decide if we're a good fit to work together, mm -hmm. you know, and being very clear in that. So depending on when I do sales support for some clients, depending on the client, when I send out the confirmation that people have scheduled an appointment, I say in no uncertain terms, this is not a free coaching session. What we are doing in this call is boom, 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 period. You know, because people need to understand it. And again, it's all about setting boundaries and expectations. If people come into that conversation thinking, oh, I'm just going to come and get all my questions answered for free, and that's not and truly what it is, mm -hmm. then it, it has that bait and switch energy around it. And then you don't feel great because that's not who you are. And they don't feel great because they're like, well, what the heck is this all about? And then it just ends up being a total hot mess. Okay. Whew. All right. You good? <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? How you feeling? Um, I, yeah, I still have like turning thoughts and stuff like that because, um, let's see. Um, because sometimes it is actually a healing session mm -hmm. and sometimes, and, and sometimes is not. And that's just something I just have to get clearer about. And that really has to do with who I'm working with at that mm -hmm. particular moment. And you can look at, if, if there's a way to qualify them before they make that decision, you could have two different types of appointments. Mm -hmm. So there could be the straight up healing sessions, which are fine, 
but mm -hmm. even, and I'll just pick on your fresh, uh, fresh look sessions because now I know what they are, you know, and that might be a lower cost investment, but that's kind of moving them. It also frees you up to give away a little bit more without feeling like I have to hold back because there mm -hmm. is some exchange as far as monetary exchange of energy. And then you're like, once they really get to see that, then they can move and, you know, hire you to work with you. And especially in your space, that's not, and it may not be your fresh look session or maybe a separate one that you create, right, but it's right. not too foreign to how things work. Like I've worked with designers before and that first session when they come to my house and they look at stuff and they put together designs, like I invested in that. I paid for that. And mm -hmm. then if I choose to work with them to actually implement the vision, that's a separate fee and that's common. And it, I didn't feel bad about it. It's like, oh, okay, that's the process. You know, so again, train your uh, prospects and your clients on how they work with you. And if that's how you choose to adjust your process. So you could have that as a session that's moving to this. And then you could also just have straight healing sessions. And they're, they're just that they're just healing sessions. And you know, you don't have to add any sales component to it if you don't desire. Perfect. Okay, thank you. That was actually really nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you, Judith. If you have yeah. any other questions, feel free to post them. I'm good. Oh, awesome. Yay, my job here is done. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to change you back to attendee. All right. So I do have some other questions here that were emailed in. So Connie V, actually, I think I saw her pop on. Hi, Connie. Um, Connie had a question where she said, I've met people at an event. So whether it's a networking event or it's at a seminar, and she feels like an email follow-up just seems flat to schedule a call. Um, but she thinks a call would work better. Is there a script to use for this so you don't get sucked into a full conversation? Don't you hate when that happens? Um, plus, what is your opinion on leaving phone messages or to keep trying to reach them by phone? Excellent, excellent question. Because how many of us have gone to events and we got cards and, yeah, we, I won't even show you the stack of cards that's currently on my desk. And we don't follow up. <laughs> So first of all, Connie, excellent question. And we don't use scripts here in Nadia's world. Um, I like to call them conversation guides. And it really, um, because scripts seem really just inauthentic. They suck. Um, so, but yes, to answer your question, yes, there is a, uh, a guide where you don't get sucked into a full conversation if you make a phone call. So here's what I do. Typically I'll reach out and I do jot down some notes so I don't, so I don't become chatty Kathy and get off track, right? I need that guidance <laughs> for myself is I met you at this event. Um, if there's a specific conversation or topic that you guys talked about, so they remember, because I go to a lot of events and I talk to a lot of people and I can remember for the life of me what they have we talked about, who they are or why I'm following up. So I make notes on their cards so that I have some guidance. Said that, and then in the conversation, you say, oh, if they answer the phone, hey, I was just reaching out to you because I met you at this event, blah, blah, blah. I would love to schedule time to talk with you and, you know, one-on-one -on -one to go deeper into that conversation and learn more about your business, how we can support each other, whatever the purpose of the call is. Um, and that's the reason why I'm calling. So if they answer, just say, hey, you have a quick second to open up your calendar and let's just schedule something right now. Like that's the only reason I'm calling you. I'm not calling you right now to get sucked into a full conversation. That's coming later. Um, you can send an email. Sometimes I do just send emails with a link to my calendar because I'm busy and I just don't, I want to follow up and I don't have time to make another 117 calls. Um, and then the other thing when it comes to leaving phone messages, I am old school. I leave phone messages <laughs> I do, unless people's voicemail boxes are full. Um, but what I do do is once I leave the voice message, I will email them and the subject line will say, I just left you a voicemail. And then I'll put, put in my little blurb with a link to my calendar. This is why I'm calling. Would love to connect with you. Here's the link. Let's schedule some time to have a one-on-one, -on -one, a virtual coffee. Um, a get acquainted session, whatever the heck you call it, right? So that's what I do. It works well. Another thing you might do, um, Connie, too, is when you meet them and you know you're going to be reaching out to them, ask them what's the way that they like to be contacted. You know, because today we have Facebook Messenger, we have text messages, we have, I don't know, smoke signals, right? We have email, we have phone call. Like, there are a lot of different things. And depending on who you're talking to, they may respond faster to one mode of communication. Um, than another. 
So it doesn't hurt to ask and you can make a note of that on their business card. Like this person prefers or they'll respond faster to Facebook Messenger, this person to Instagram Messenger. To, and, I, and I know it could get nuts, but you know, if you want to go that deep with it, but I think, you know, follow up period is first and foremost, the most important part. The fact that you're reaching out and what makes it easy for you that you're going to actually get it done. So you won't have a stack of business cards or a list of contacts that are just staring at you and you're not doing it. Also keep in mind that the people you're reaching out to are busy. So what can you do to make it easy for them as well? And I found that calls are great, but you know, like you said, having some talking points so I can get right to the point and get it called and then we can have a conversation. But then also if you have a little blurb that you have written up with a link to your calendar that you can just sit down one day and email. And I always encourage you to personalize it a little bit like we had lunch or we sat together at this break or you know, we were hanging out talking to one another in the ladies room because there's a lot of things that happen in the line waiting to go to the ladies room. You know, whatever that is so that they remember is also really key. So you can personalize it. I don't recommend just sticking them in your CRM and just doing a blast email. That's way too impersonal. Um, and then at, at the point where you actually have someone on your team that you can delegate some of that to, that's also nice where they can at least do that initial follow-up and then you can come in and have the conversations. So I have a client who actually has an appointment setter for that very reason. That person's sole job is just to reach out to people on her behalf and schedule conversations. So those are a couple different ideas. Does that help? Just let me know. Um, such a good reminder. Yay. Thank you. Let me know if you have a follow-up, Connie. And I'm glad you were able to join us. Awesome. Perfect. All right. We have one more question here in the Q&A box. Ms. LaVista. Dr. Nadi, what's the best approach to reach out to make a personal connection with those that you are connecting to on social media? I have daily connection requests on LinkedIn and Facebook. How do I best leverage those requests to really connect with new people? Um, great question, La Vista. Um, I think a lot of us have that same thing. One of the things that you can do um, is very similar to what I said to Connie. Kind of have your standard people reach out to me. And you can even say, you know what, I get a lot of these requests and people request to connect, but I really want to connect. And then you can send them a quick blurb and invite them to uh, schedule time on your calendar. I also encourage you to then create a different type of appointment type, just so you know like where they're coming from. And it's more of a back-end thing for you, um, but it really helps to really invite them to have a, a virtual coffee. And I've met a lot of people that way, um, especially on LinkedIn where they either reached out to me and they took the initiative and they're like, here's my link, would love to schedule virtual coffee with you. Um, or I've done it and people really do do that. Be consistent. So start keeping track of it because they may not respond the first time. But I think in that initial acceptance request, um, it's a great time to say, you know, thank you so much for connecting with me. Would love to really connect and get to know you, learn more about your business, what it is that you're doing all those great and amazing things. Um, and then again, include that link. That's so you don't get caught up in the, is this day available? Oh wait, that time isn't available anymore. Like that's crazy madness. Include that link uh, and then they can schedule time on your calendar. Let me know if you have a follow up to that. Uh, woo, you're welcome. This was awesome. Woo, this, any other questions? That's all I had in the Q and A. Um, let me scroll through chat box really quick yeah i'm so glad you guys are here this is so much fun cool anyone else have a question a burning question you're like okay that sparked something in me anyone let me check facebook really quick Okay, maybe not really quick because my Facebook is moving really slow. <laughs> All right, doesn't look like we have a ton of questions over there. All right, cool. Ah, great question. So Connie had a follow-up. How many times do you suggest reaching out before we decide they aren't interested? Um, actually, that's a personal decision. Um, I, here's what I caution against. Don't let your feelings get in the way, um, or your ego, because that happens. 
And you may not just follow up as frequently. So maybe rule of thumb, if you met someone at an event, I maybe want to follow within the first 48 hours. If I don't hear back, maybe the next two weeks. And then it may be a little more infrequent. So maybe every 90 days. I think until someone tells you to leave me alone, um, you can still just kind of check in and just see, you know, what it is. But you just, you won't call them every day. So in the beginning, it may be a little more frequent, maybe every week or monthly. And then if you still don't hear anything, or again, you may even send them an email and say, you know what, am I getting on your nerves? Do you want me to go away? Like, don't be afraid to be bold because you're like, oh crap, no, Connie girl, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. This been so busy. Let me book it. Um, but just ask, you know, would you like me to stop reaching out to you? <laughs> or is it okay if I continue to reach out to you? Um, and maybe I'll just follow up with you in 90 days. So there's no hard and fast rule as far as I'm concerned, unless someone just flat out says, Connie, please don't ever reach out to me again as long as we both shall live. Then don't reach out to that person anymore. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's see. Let me know if that helps, Connie. You're welcome, Colleen. Thanks for joining. And then Evangeline says, how to bring a discovery session to a comfortable inn and ask for the sale. Oh yeah. So here's where your conversation guides come in handy because it can become very tricky if you're not careful. Um, and we get uncomfortable. So as much as I do sales, I still have those days um, when I'm like, ooh, I need to save the investment, right? So here's the thing. There are a couple of things that I need you to do, Evangeline, before you even get to that is one, as I talked with Judith, setting proper expectations at the beginning of the call. So does this person know that you're gonna extend an invitation? And how you word that is completely up to you, but they need to know. You may say something like, but, you know, before we wrap up this call, if we both decide that we're a great fit or we like each other, we wanna work together, I will invite you to work with me and I will share with you what that looks like. So there's that piece. And then I also encourage you to ask a lot of questions. And I don't know your format for a discovery session, so let me know if this is completely way off how you're rolling with it now. Um, but your questions should really help you uncover how you can best serve that person. And then once you have enough information in your arsenal, you'll just let them know, great, here's how I can work with you. And then here's what that looks like. And I know that's overly general, but it really is that easy. It really is. Um, and the goal though is for people to actually be excited about learning. So also be a, uh, pay attention to certain things that they say. Like, do they ask? Like, well, what does that look like? Clue, they want to know more, right? Um, what does it look like to work with you? I had a client, I did a, a sales call audit and a, her prospect literally asked her, what does it look like to work with you? And she was so nervous. She didn't answer her question. She's like, well, you can look at my website and I can follow up. Like those are the cues like, yes, let's move that into the conversation. That is now, if that doesn't happen, then of course you will guide them through that process. So once they're done with questions, great. Here's what that, you know, I can help you with this problem. Here's what that looks like. Remember, answer that question of what's in it for her first. Go through what the process actually looks like and then state the investment and then be quiet. Easy peasy. I know you're like rolling your eyes at me right now. You're like, it's not that easy, Dr. Nadia, but essentially it is. It really is. The investment to work with me is $27,000. And just be quiet and wait and let her answer. It's awesome. Any follow-ups to that? <laughs> and I can't see you, Evangeline, but I imagine that there is some serious eye rolling going over. <laughs> That sounded great. I'm not sure that is awesome. <laughs> so again, just really look at setting proper expectations, asking lots of questions, knowing your programs, what the benefits are, testimonials, client success stories, all of that is important. But then the big piece is just telling people, once you have their permission at the beginning, how it's gonna go, then you take the lead and guide them through that entire process. So your discovery sessions, sessions, your strategy sessions should all lead to a natural buying decision. And what is that decision? Decision may not always be yes, so let's be clear, because you may not always wanna work with that person. So part of this is, do I wanna work with you? Do you wanna work with me? And then at the end, we get to decide what that looks like. So really being clear, but setting those expectations, 
having your own guidelines around what that looks like. And don't allow fear to get in the way. Because a lot of times it's just fear, Evangeline, that's getting in the way with your eye. I know, I know you're rolling your eyes. Um, of you just, you know, inviting people to work with them. You know, like, do, and don't be afraid to call people out. People come to you for, to solve a specific problem. And you can ask them, do you really want to solve this? Because if not, then we are, you know, let's just end it now. But if you do, I can help you. I would love to help you. And here's what this looks like. <laughs> I'm glad it was helpful. And I knew about the eye rolling. <laughs> cool. Let's see. Any other questions? We have about four more minutes. Um, while we're just waiting to see if we have any more questions, would love to stay connected with all of you. Thank you so much for joining. This was so much fun. I, I will let you know when we'll do this again. If you did not have a question or you did not have the courage just yet to ask your question because you did not want to be on camera, you might not have been camera ready, I get that. Feel free to head on over to meetwithdrnadia.com. Actually, let me type that out for you. Meetwithdrnadia.com and you can schedule a call with me and we can, you know, you can ask me your question there <laughs> and I can help you. But this is what I get to do all the time in helping clients put together a conversation guide, doing their sales call audits, really helping them with their sales playbooks or certain clients are like, you know what, I don't have time for this and I get to manage all of their uh, sales conversations. One of the things that I just wanted to share, if you had already picked up on that, is a key distinction for me is I am very focused on relationship and I won't ever pull out the baseball bat and beat people into submission and giving up their credit cards. That's not how we roll over here. That's not how I would believe in doing sales. And I really believe in you being able to have fun in building your business. And trust me, I know from personal experience how not having sales conversations and allowing that fear to hold you back was very damaging to my business and I wasn't able to serve the clients that I wanted to serve. So I'm really excited you all are here today. These are some really awesome questions. Um, yeah, so if we don't have any other questions, I won't hold you, I know we're all busy. Final questions. No more burning questions for today? All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will let you know. I'm looking at maybe September, first Thursday in September, when we'll do this again, but I'll be sure to let you know. So then you can have your questions and send them over. You're very welcome, Judith. Thank you so much for being in the love seat today. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you all for joining, and I will see you all again soon. Bye-bye.